today we're going to look at one of the signs that would seem to point to the fact that we're getting close to the end times, which means the times of the return of Christ, the, the rapture, uh, the tribulation, and, and that, that period of time. Uh, the very first sign and one of the major signs is Israel. Whenever you want to find out what's happening uh, in, in the world, we should look at Israel because Israel is the apple of God's eye, is, is what the Bible says. In Luke 21, 23 to 24, this is what Jesus says. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be a great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Jesus prophesied about the destruction that was about to come on, the, on Jerusalem and the temple of God in 70 AD by the Roman Empire. And we know in 70 AD that his prophecies came true. Uh, there was a dreadful time that came upon Jerusalem and that the people did have to flee. They, they were taken prisoners to the nations. Israel did need to, to flee their land and they ended up in all countries around the world. They spread across the world and this Jesus prophesied about them. They were never able to return to their country until 1948. Jesus says that the time between the time that they had to leave, that they were spread across, around the world, and until the time they return, is called the time of the Gentiles. It's the church age. It's the time uh, where God chooses to take his focus off Israel and focus on the people of this world and bring salvation to the people of this world and build his church. And then once more, he will take away his church and focus back on his people. And he will focus back on Israel. And that is where uh, the tribulation will come and a thousand years of his reign for his people, Israel. And so this is the time of the Gentiles. Uh, listen to Romans 11.25. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. So Israel has ex experienced a hardening of their hearts. Most of them do not accept Jesus as their Messiah and their hearts are hardened, and their hearts will be hardened until the time of the Gentiles is over, until all the Gentiles that are supposed to become Christians will become Christians. We're in a time right now where God is focusing on the church, but in Luke 21 it says that Jerusalem will be trampled on until the end of this time. And once the time of the Gentiles comes to an end, the people of Israel will return, and Jerusalem will no longer be trampled. In 1948, we understand that the time of the church is, is coming to an end, that God is starting to focus back on His people. And therefore, we must understand by this that God is preparing to go, go and focus back on His people. Uh, the church at that time, in 1948, was amazed that the nation of Israel became a nation in one day, which was prophesied in the Bible. Isaiah 66, 8, Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who had ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her child. Israel becoming a nation in, in one day amazed the church, and all of a sudden the church everywhere was starting to talk about end time prophecies, and those who were unwise were giving dates. And because of this focus in 1948 and, and, uh, and on uh, into the 80s and 90s, the church were talking about the end times a lot and nothing happened. Now that we're in 2020, we're, we've become so sick of it. And we're like, yeah, well, forget it. Let's not talk about it. Let's not focus about that. And that is a huge mistake because the church was correct in understanding that 1948 was a key moment in end time prophecy. It absolutely was and it still is. When Jesus was born, prophecies were being fulfilled, and that time had arrived, and yet there was a time of silence between his birth and his ministry of three years and his death and resurrection. So there was a, a time of silence there, and in 1948, there, there was that time, all of a sudden we know that, okay, all of a sudden God is, is focusing back on Israel, and there is a time of silence right now. He did not return right away, but yet his return is close because of this. There is a lot of talk about the building of the third temple and that the temple is needed for the Antichrist to set his uh, abomination up and to stand in the temple and put an end to sacrifice and to set himself up as God in the temple. We know that the temple needs to be rebuilt before the halfway time of the tribulation because 
Satan needs to set himself up as God in the temple in Jerusalem halfway into the tribulation. And because we hear so much about this third temple, people, again, they become sick and tired of hearing about it. And yet, we, we, we must understand that the building of this third temple, whether you think it's important or not, the Jews think it's extremely important, and they are completely ready to build it. They have everything they need to build it, and, and all they need is, is the go-ahead. Incredible things are happening with this temple and the sacrifices and the priests all being ready like this. This is also a huge sign that things are ready to move forward with the end times. In December uh, 2018, the Sanhedrin uh, dedicated the altar of offering. Uh, they gave offerings on the altar to dedicate it so that they can use it. This was an event that not many people took notice of. They did this by the wall of, uh, in Jerusalem. When you think of it, it's, it's a huge deal. They, they are ready to the point where their, their altar is dedicated. They have already offered offerings on it. And this has not happened since 70 AD. They've never been able to offer an offering. They've never had the priests, and they've never had the, the objects for the offering, and the, the altar, and all these things. But everything is made. Everything is ready to the point where, they, where they've already dedicated this altar. This is also a huge sign that things are moving forward towards the end times. You, you may have also heard about the red heifer that they had to breed. This red heifer was to be offered on the altar in order to dedicate it. So this is what happened back in December 2018. Back in 2018, a group of Jews have, have created a coin, a shekel, which is used for the offering in the temple. And on this shekel, there's uh, King Cyrus and there's Trump. This move that Trump made to make Jerusalem the, the capital city of Israel is a, is a big deal. And again, you know, you, you may say, oh, people get all hyped up, and I don't think we should get all hyped up and all crazy about these things. I don't think we should ignore these things either. Just because we don't think it's a big deal, obviously there are people out there that do think it's a big deal. Cyrus was the king who allowed the Jews to go back and rebuild the temple in the Old Testament. And they're putting the picture of Trump and Cyrus together on this shekel. So obviously they think, and this may not be right, it may absolutely be wrong, but they view Trump as someone who will allow them to rebuild the temple. Uh, whether they're right or wrong, I have no idea. But all I'm saying is the signs are there that there are, there's a major push to rebuild the temple. There's a major push to start offering again, which is a major sign that the Bible gives that the Antichrist is, is set to come back. Listen to what uh, the Bible says about Cyrus. Isaiah 45, 1. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. Uh, Cyrus was a tool of God. He was no Christian. He was uh, not God's man as, as far as his belief in God. But God used this, this man to, to subdue kingdoms and to allow his people to rebuild the temple. Now, I have no idea if truly Trump is a Cyrus. Only time will tell with that. But if he is, we could see that, that Trump might be used to bring about some kind of agreement to bring this temple back into Jerusalem. In 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. From that point on, there was no more temple of God here on earth. And we became the temple. The church became the temple. That's what Paul teaches us. You are God's temple. You, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. At the rapture, this temple will be taken away from the earth. And it seems that there will be a new temple. That the third temple will be built. And this is the temple where the abomination will be uh, held. Where Satan will stand there and call himself God. Where is this need of the third temple seen in the Bible? Let's look at Daniel 9.27. Uh, this is talking about the Antichrist, that he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. At the time of the Antichrist, there's going to be, have to be a temple and there's going to have to be offerings offered up in the temple at that time which uh, we see that they're heading towards that direction. They're ready to offer offerings because they have dedicated this altar, but there's no temple yet. Before the first three and a half years of the reign of the Antichrist happens, there needs to be a temple up. Daniel 11, 31-32 
His armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up an abomination that causes desolation. With flattery he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will firmly resist him. So here again we have the, the temple mentioned at the coming of the Antichrist. Matthew 24, 15-16 also talks about this. When you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Jesus also says that this abomination is coming in the temple, and, and this abomination is not only a statue that's going to be erected, probably the statue that Revelation 13 talks about, there will be the Antichrist himself calling himself God in the temple. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.4 He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. So when this Antichrist comes, according to Second Thessalonians, he will set himself up to be worshipped in the temple of God, so that we need this temple to be there. Because the temple is so close to being ready, uh, we, we must understand that that time is drawing near. Another thing uh, that we can look at is the nations that are surrounding Israel. And this is something that I do not know much about, but something worth looking into is uh, basically in Ezekiel 38 and 39, there's, there's a description of a battle that's going to happen in the end times. And the, the key players that are going to come against Israel are Russia, Turkey, and Iran. These are countries that never really got along with each other, but these are countries that are getting along more, more and more with each other. Uh, there's communication among them, they're working together, and they are in the news constantly these days. You, you hear about Turkey, Iran, and Russia all the time right now. This prophecy would have been unbelievable several years ago. This also is something that the nations surrounding Israel uh, is something to be looked at, something to be studied, something that I do not know enough about. So this is one of the major signs, something that we should pay attention to. Our next sign for, for our next video will be the fall of the church, the apostasy of the church. That is also uh, the major sign that Jesus gives to us that the end is coming.